That's right, more GT announcements have hit the pavement. We finally have a release date being the 4th of March 2022. To many fans a delight, this is far sooner than expected. Along with the release date, to continue the hype train, the GT team has also dropped another epic trailer, released a whole shaft of game details and also released the retail versions of GT7 that will be available to you for purchase. Before we cover off the specific details, let's get straight into the latest trailer that I know you are all eagerly waiting to see. Hope you all enjoyed that bang and drop. A lot in there to unpack later, but first let's look at some of the finer details of the announcement. Here we get another look behind the scenes at the game itself. We can see where it has progressed from its predecessors in the initial announcement trailer about 10 months earlier. GT Mode returns in true classic fashion with a homepage that reflects a mini Gran Turismo City. Dynamic weather is active even in the GT mode menu, so that you are not left with a stale static menu in your downtime. We will also see a return of many of the tracks that we have all come to know and love. With about all of the GT Sport tracks confirmed for GT7, and dust off your patience hat because you will need it as licenses are back in full force. Those of you that were hoping for a true GT experience look to be in the money with Gran Turismo 7. Car collection has always been a massive part of Gran Turismo. I know deep down inside of me there is something innate about collecting cars. Although it has never been a requirement to complete a Gran Turismo game, it is always a satisfying challenge to collect as many of the rare and expensive cars or even just your dirt cheap favourites that you can. 
the GT Cafe will be your encyclopedia of collected cars. And we see the used car dealership return that enables us to collect our favourite cars of yesteryear. So get ready to start grinding those collections guys. Car tuning is back and looks to be expanded on. It will be interesting to see to what extent this impacts online play, but at least for the career mode, buying an old 90s dinger and tuning it up as you progress will be as ever possible as it was in the previous Gran Turismo's. On top of this, one of the standout features from GT Sport has been carried over into GT7. The livery editor was already a very good feature in GT Sport, so even if little improvements are only made, this is still going to go down well for those that are big on customising their rides. Now for those of you that were paying close attention to the first two trailers, you will have noticed that a large majority of the gameplay takes place on an all too familiar scene, Trial Mountain. It has now been confirmed that Trial Mountain and High Speed Ring return and improved for racing on the PS5. Will there be further classic tracks returning to the seventh instalment of the series? I for one sure do hope so. And there is a lot more coming than just the tarmac on the road. A large emphasis has been placed on the PS5's next generation's performance and abilities to immerse yourself in gaming like no other console. For GT7 this means an improved time and weather system. I can't imagine this will be too noticeable in the short form racing other than from one race to the next time, weather and track conditions may vary but I'm really excited to see how this performs in endurance racing where from one hour to the next in a real world race seasons can literally change. Let's hope that GT7 can replicate this in an interesting and immersive way like no other game out there. And Scape's return bigger and better than before. I know this may not have been the most popular section of earlier Gran Turismo installments, but showing off your unique cars with stunning backdrops has always been a large part of car culture and magazines in real life. So it's great to see the GT team continue to put love into all the features of what makes up a GT game. As far as the GT7 versions available for purchase go, you have a few options out there. At first glance they may all look the same, but they are not, there are a few subtle differences between them. There are two retail versions available, Launch Edition and the 25th Anniversary Edition. These are available both in disc or digital versions and you can purchase it for the PS4, the PS5 or you can buy a copy that works on both the PS4 and PS5 but it's not quite as straightforward as you might hope. Let's start off by looking at the Launch Edition. Purchasing this will entitle you to the base game, 100,000 in-game credits to start with, and a 3 car pack made up of the Mazda RX Vision, the Porsche 917 Living Legend, and, a fan favourite, the Toyota Supra GT500 with the Kestrel Toms livery. It is important to note that there is a price difference here, with the PS4 version being slightly cheaper, but also more importantly, only the PS5 digital version will give you access to play on the PS4. So, if you are planning on upgrading to the PS5 after launch, you might want to consider buying the PS5 digital version, or else you will have to repurchase the full game later on. I know a lot of people are in this boat with the resupply delays for the PS5. Now, for the 25th anniversary edition, I for one think this version is much cooler and is where I'll be putting my money. Again, you can buy the physical disc copy or a digital copy. The great thing about the physical disc copy is that buying this you will get the physical copy of the PS5 version plus they will also throw in a digital copy of the PS4 version with it. Buying the digital copy will work on both generations of the console. So either way, you don't run in the risk of having to rebuy the whole game again like you do with the launch edition. The main difference between the digital and disc versions here comes down to a choice between a steelbook case or an extra 500,000 credits in game. Now call me an old school boomer, but I like to have a physical copy of my favourite games, so disc it is for me. Aside from that, you also get all the content included in the launch edition, plus a Toyota GR Yaris with country specific liveries, PlayStation Network avatars, 
and the GT7 soundtrack so that you can play this on date night with your significant other and share the love of Gran Turismo. So that covers off all the info included with the release date announcement. I'm sure there will be plenty more dropped in the coming months so stay tuned. To see the previous announcement, check it out in the next video linked here.